According to two scientific studies, tornado activity throughout the U.S. has shifted over the past several decades. Scientists say tornadoes are decreasing in frequency in traditionally prone places like Oklahoma and Kansas, but tornado frequency is increasing farther east in more densely populated areas. For more on this, I want to bring in CBS News contributing meteorologist Jeff Baradelli. Jeff, this doesn't sound like it's great news. I mean, I guess it's good news for the people that are Right. going to be seeing fewer tornadoes, yeah. but it doesn't sound like it's great news for people who live in areas that aren't prepared for it. it, it that's exactly right. So the shift is happening towards the southeastern United States and the Midwest. Now, the Midwest, they're used to tornadoes. Southeast, they also get tornadoes. But we seem to be getting a lot more in places like Alabama, Mississippi, uh, Arkansas, places like Missouri. So because of that, these people are less prepared. And there's also another problem there. It's a lot more trees, so it's hard to see tornadoes coming. And by the way, climatologically speaking, Tornadoes tend to happen at night more often in the southeast than they do in the plain states. And then you kind of add to that the, the fact that uh, the framed homes are, are not really built for big tornadoes like they are in places like Moore, Oklahoma, let's say, where they get those big uh, EF4s and EF5s. So uh, there's really a, a, a danger for disaster there. In fact, they calculate in this paper that uh, the chance for potential disaster goes up by three times uh, because of this shift to the east That's pretty uh, in, scary in the news. new tornado alley, if you will. Absolutely. It's very scary for people yeah. in that region. Now, what sorts of climate changes are responsible for this? So here's what's happening. Uh, there's dry air that's been building in the deep southwest, a, a persistent drought. And that dry air doesn't stay there. It kind of starts spreading out. So it seems to be pushing the dry line, which is typically where these tornadoes and severe weather initiates. Uh, anybody who's from the Plain States knows about the dry line. Uh, one side of it is moist. It has gulf air, warm, moist air. The western side is desert air, and all that desert air seems to be progressing to the east. So we're seeing a movement of what we call the 100th meridian or the 100th longitudinal line. Basically, that means that drier air is moving further east. The severe weather is moving east, and it's also having an impact on agriculture as well. So it's it's really having a big impact. Right. So this eastward shift, then I, I'm assuming, can you elaborate on how it's affecting agriculture? Yeah. So the problem here is it's moved about 140 miles to the east. Columbia University this spring put out a, a whole article on this. And, and it really causes a problem for farmers because they rely on consistent weather. And climate change causes a lot of extremes. Now, we're not 100% sure that what's happening with the tornado story that we just did is due to climate change, but the lead researchers, I talked to one of them today, mm -hmm. said it probably is climate change. And Columbia University also thinks that it's this man-made climate change that's causing this dry line or the 100th meridian to move further east. And basically what that means for farmers is where you used to be able to plant corn, it's harder now, you have to plant wheat. And there are farmers who are legitimately concerned about their future, uh, their lifestyle right now, and passing along their farms to their children, and by the way, to the uh, viability of the towns where these farms exist. It's not so easy to transfer your crops like that. I mean, if you've been planting one crop your whole life, it's not so easy to just suddenly up and change it. It's true, and is that next crop that you plant as profitable? Right. You know, what kind of economic impact does that have to the families that run these farms and for the communities uh, in the area. So we are seeing that shift because uh, climate change dictates uh, that it's likely to get drier in the deep southwest. And because of that, that drier will continue to expand to the east. And, and it's likely also going to cause the, the frequency of tornadoes to continue to expand to the east. So will this eastward expansion mean that the tornadoes will become deadlier? because of the region that it's entering? It's very possible. And again, that's because of, of a lot of factors. It's not just because there are more tornadoes in the southeast. It's because they're harder to see. They're wrapped in rain because they're they're containing gulf air. Right. In the Plain State, you can see tornadoes from dozens of miles away sometimes, or at least 10 miles away or, or so. But you know, when you're talking about places in the southeast, it, there's a lot of gulf moisture and a lot of heavy rain, and you can't see the tornadoes coming. So there's lots of reasons why they're more deadly in the southeast. Now, Jeff, the El Nino forecast yeah. was released Thursday by Columbia University. Mm -hmm. Explain El Nino to us and what it tells us about the upcoming winter. All right, so the premier forecast comes from the IRI, which is the International 
Research Institute at Columbia University. Uh, they put it out today. It's in conjunction with NOAA as well. And basically, El Nino is a warming of the surface waters in the Pacific. And right now, we're on the cusp of what looks to be uh, an El Nino. Uh, Columbia University says that their computer models are predicting about an 85, 90% chance that there will be an El Nino uh, starting in November, probably lasting through about April or so. Uh, that warmer water kind of changes the air currents uh, in the atmosphere and the jet streams, and oftentimes it has a big impact on the United States. This is considered, this is going to be considered a moderate El Nino, most likely. It means it's going to be wetter in Southern California, probably. That's the forecast. Wetter in the deep southwest through Texas into Florida, then maybe up the eastern seaboard. And here's why that becomes important, because once you get to North Carolina and north of that, all that cold air sometimes, sometimes phases or mixes with all that moisture. We can get some bomb, you know, big snowstorms so, along the eastern seaboard, especially from New York City south. So is that what we're expecting then? Some huge snowstorms? Well, you or never it's know. Too early to tell. Well, you never know if the timing is going to work out, but the right. ingredients would be there. Uh, it would be normal. Let's say normal temperatures expected this winter in places like New York City. You'd also have uh, more moisture kind of creeping up the coast. And if they can come together, you can see some of your biggest snowstorms during El Nino year. At the same time, though, it makes the Pacific Northwest a little bit drier than normal and a little warmer than normal everywhere in like the northern tier of states. So from uh, Washington and Oregon eastward uh, straight across the Great Lakes or so. Lots of impacts expected. The one that we're looking for in New York City is the possibility of a, a mega snowstorm along the eastern seaboard. Sometimes it happens oh. during El Nino. Sometimes it doesn't. Not looking forward to I that. But, <laughs> but in terms of temperatures, it sounds like they're expected to be pretty temperate. You know, usually it ends up being just slightly above normal, actually. Right. So it may be warmer, but when that cold air meets that moisture, bang, you can get a big snowstorm. The perfect storm. <laughs> Jeff, thank you so much <laughs> for that.